Welcome to a new video about astrophotography. This time we're going to connect my C8 and all the peripherals to my CEM40 mount. I will be using an ASI294 camera, which is the MC Pro, a cult camera. And um, we're going to connect all to the CEM40 amount by Ioptron. First we will connect the counterweights. And these will counterbalance the scope. And we will first connect these because when we put the scope on without the counterweights we might damage the gears inside the mount. I have my counter shaft bar marked so I almost know where the balance point is and let's not forget to put back the toe saver. So time to connect the telescope. This is a Celestron C8 and I've deforked it because originally it came in a fork mount. I connected the dovetail bar and now I can mount it on an equatorial mount. Next up is the guide scope. It's a ZWO6280 guide scope and I am mounting it on my C8 in the finder shoe which is a little bit finicky so I might want to replace that also at these focal lengths it's sometimes advised not to use a guide scope the ASI Air I will connect that using the screw hole that's there it has uh, outputs for power, USB ports and this screw hole is perfect for this ball head that I have mounted on my C8. And I'm positioning it way to the right so it will counteract a bit to the weight that is being uh, pulled down by the guide scope. I have a a Y cable for the connection of the dew shields. So I have port 2 assigned to the dew uh, protection. The USB cable for the camera. So let's connect that but because it is USB you always connect it the wrong side first and the other end goes into the camera the guide scope is fitted with an ASI 120mm mini which can be connected directly to the camera USB hub and in the USB 3 port we can connect the memory stick then the mount USB cable can be connected to the ASI Air Pro and of course again we need to turn it around and the other end goes into the USB port on the side of the CEM40. This way the ASI Air Pro and the mount can talk to each other. Then we can use the power cable, the Y splitter cable that I have for mounting one end in the camera, the other in the ASI Air Pro and I can use a small cable extension to mount the cable into the dovetail plate. Next up is the dew shield. This will protect the main corrector plate from dewing up or getting dewed over. What is the English word for that? This will also need some power. So this goes in the other connection. Then a very important step. I'm going to balance the mount and as I said I marked my uh, counterweight shaft so I am almost in balance already. 
and it is the RA axis that I care the most for getting a, a good balance because in the uh, in the deck direction I cannot find balance with this setup because of the guide scope mounted on top the CEM will handle it perfectly so I don't care let's connect the power and the handset it's not necessary to connect the handset but I do so uh, anyways because it works <laughs> this is the GPS module and then we can switch everything on So, we are in the ASI Air app and let's test if everything works by slewing the mount to Sirius. But because it's daytime and I didn't accurately put the mount on a polar alignment position, it will of course not point correctly to Sirius. When we want to polar align, then we really need to have the mount in its home position. So we can go to mount settings and let the mount move to its home position. And when it is in the home position, then we can start the polar alignment routine when it's dark, of, not, of course. And after the polar alignment routine has been completed, then we only need to find the perfect focus and then we can start our image run. So, hi there. We're going to set up my telescope and uh, let's see if this will be a nice night. I have a Divolo Magic Wi-Fi thingy, a power line adapter in my shed and I can just simply turn it on, currently connecting itself. The Wi-Fi is on now and now it also has a connection to my home network. Now my ASI Air should be able to see my phone and there we are so that's it now we need to wait for some darkness so we can start our polar alignment so uh, see you in a bit here we are it is dark at least in the sky. It's very weird now to have a light aimed at my telescope, but yeah, otherwise you would not see anything. So um, I have my telescope pointed to the home position and now we can go into polar alignment PA. I have set my exposure to five seconds. Uh, I have it always at five seconds. Works for me. So we will press the play button and it will start shooting this five second exposure then it will do a plate solve and it's done already I can press next and the scope will now move to its 60 degrees position after which it will then take another five second exposure and then it will do some calculations to see how much the star field has changed and how much of it is incorrect compared to where it should be when correctly polar aligned. So now it shows me the error and I will need to move the telescope mount in its 
azimuth and altitude positions. So let's first start with the azimuth. I use a tool for this because the CEM has way too small knobs to, to turn, especially as it is cold now. Five. Two. And now we are at one. Well, that's good enough for now. Um, and we have to go down a bit. I stick the Allen key, which is in the mount, into one of the holes in this altitude knob. And we need to get the total error below the two. So there we go. So it is 51 to the left now, and it's now 37 to the right. So I overshot again, so let's stop here. So we have now a total error of 24 arc seconds. So let's uh, try and see what happens if we go now to... Where do we go? Where do you want to go? Shall we just simply go to the Orion Nebula? M42. And go. So now it will do a test shot to see if it is centered. And then it centers itself. And here we are. So we should now start to see the Orion Nebula. There it is. So that's it. We're done. And we can start running our image run. So let's make it dark.